This video goes through uh, the prediction examples where you're making a bet about whether it will rain or not. So in this case, our random variable y is a dummy for whether it rains or not. And as usual, little g is your guess about whether it will rain or not. And we make this simple $1 bet with your friend. So the loss function is a function of uh, little y is whether or not in reality it did rain or not, 1 or 0 and then your guess. So if you are incorrect, for example, L10 means it did rain, but you guessed that it would not, your loss is one, meaning you lose one dollar because you have to pay your friend a dollar because you were wrong. And in this case, uh, you also lose a dollar if you guess that it will rain, but it does not. So here L01 means it did not rain, but you guessed that it would. In other words, you are wrong, and you lose a dollar. If you... Uh, sorry, if it does not rain, and that is what you guessed, then you're correct, and you win a dollar. And remember, winning is the same as negative losing. So we can write this as a loss of negative one. And similarly, if it does rain, and that's what you guessed, you win a dollar, or in other words, you lose negative one dollar. So losing negative dollars is a good thing. So this is our setup. And then finally, we need to know what's the probability of raining, or what's the probability of y equals 1. And at least to start, we'll set that to 40% or 0.4. So now we have enough information to compute uh, our mean loss in the case where we guess no rain and in the case where we guess rain. And then we can just choose whichever guess minimizes our mean loss. So in the first case, if we guess zero, we can think of our loss as a random variable because the loss depends on whether or not it rains, which is a random variable, and then our guess which is zero, which is not random. So because it's random, it has a probability uh, if we are, if it does not rain, so if y is zero, then we are correct. And we're in this situation at the top where our loss is negative one. So loss equal to negative 1 in this case is the same as the probability that y equals 0, which is the same as uh, 1 minus the probability that y equals 1, because there's only two possibilities. So if there's a 40% chance that it rains, there's a must be a 60% chance 
that it does not rain. So we'll get 0.6. And then similarly, the probability that our loss is 1 is the same as the probability that y equals 1. Uh, which is 0.4. So then these are the probabilities we need to plug into the discrete random variable uh, expected value or mean formula. So putting it all together, expectation or the mean loss when we guess zero is the probability that this probability here, 0 0.6, the probability that our loss is negative 1. So 0 0.6 times negative 1, and then plus the other probability, 0 0.4 times that corresponding loss of 1. So just like usual, probability times value plus probability times value. And if we do that out, we end up with a negative 0.2 for the mean loss given that we guess no rain. And we can do the same thing with g equals 1. Uh, so if we look at our loss, our mean loss similar to before, but now we're going to guess 1 instead of 0. So now the 0.6, that was the probability that y equals 0. And now this time, if y equals 0, we get it wrong. So then we get a loss of positive 1. And similarly, uh, there's a 0.4 probability that y equals 1. But in this case, if y equals 1, that's good for us because we guessed that it would rain and it did rain. So then we get that negative 1 loss. And then if we do the arithmetic out there, we end up with a positive 0.2. Now, you have to remember, positive loss is bad. That means, on average, we'll lose 20 cents, which is bad. Remember, negative loss is good. Negative losing is winning. So we can see, in this case, we should guess that it will not rain because, uh, on average, we will win money, 20 cents, whereas if we guess that it will rain, on average we'll lose money. And this should make intuitive sense because here we've assumed uh, it's less likely to rain than to not rain, so we just end up guessing the more likely value. We can do the same calculations changing the probability to see how that would change our optimal guess. So if instead of 40% chance of rain, there's a 70% chance of rain, that means there's a 30% or 0.3 chance of no rain. Now all of the loss 
values. Our loss function is the exact same as before. So all we need to do is replace the probabilities wherever we see those. So the 0.6, wherever we see that, changes to a 0.3. We can fill that in. Oops. Set changes to a 0.3. And the uh, what was 0.4 is now 0.7. Seven, seven. Of course, that will change our mean loss values on the right hand side. So we'll need to redo the arithmetic. Um, we can see that this expression now, there's a bigger positive number than negative number. We end up with 0.4. Um, and here now there's a bigger negative than positive, and we end up with negative 0.4. So now in this case, again, remembering that uh, positive loss is bad, negative loss is better. Um, we can see that it's better for us to guess that it will rain because on average we'll win 40 cents, whereas if we guess no rain, we would on average lose 40 cents. So we can see how that the underlying probabilities directly affect uh, our optimal prediction in this example. As a second and final twist, we could imagine uh, going back to the original probabilities, but changing the loss function. So there's back with our original probabilities. Now imagine that if you correctly predict rain, instead of winning one dollar, you now win ten dollars. I'm not sure why, that's just what happens. Uh, so now we need to find all the places where we used that loss and replace the negative one that we had before with negative 10. So uh, it turns out that only shows up in this case down at the very bottom right where we're guessing one and then we have the probability that the true value is also equal to one and so now that's a negative 10 so that will also change our final answer here it will actually end up with a very negative loss of negative 3.4, again, negative is good, so that means on average uh, our mean winnings are $3.40. Uh, so that's much better than uh, only winning an average of 20 cents. So in this case now, it is more optimal for us to bet that it will rain and we can think about this intuitively because even though it's a little bit less likely to rain than to not rain, we get such a big payout if we're correct about it raining that it's worth it to be wrong more of the time because when we get that big payout, that really ends up uh, making a big difference. So. You can sort of see through this simple example, which does not actually look that simple, um, but we can see how both the probabilities, or in other words, the distribution of the random variables affects our optimal prediction, and we can also see how 
the loss function affects our optimal prediction.